Welcome Leroy Hort to the show. How you doing today, Leroy? What's up? Can I give you guys a little hope? Okay. Please. As uh, far please as the Guardians? Do. Yes. You realize I just went through the uh, Stanley Cup Finals where the Panthers took a 3 nothing lead. Yeah. And it went to Game 7. Yeah, it happens. And, yeah, and sure. all the things that you're talking about, I'm more than sure they were talking about in Edmonton. Like, what are we doing? They yeah. can't do this. They can't do yeah, that. You're right. You're and right. they won three in a row. So one of the incredible things about the seven-game series is just that. So it's time to bounce calm back. Down. That's right. Right. Like, there's, there's time, especially in a sport where you play 162 games. They've never had a two-game losing streak. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, so, listen, I agree 100%. Yeah. Leroy, I wanted to start with Amari Cooper. Do you, do you think that the Browns trading Amari Cooper signals – that they are waving the white flag on the season. Guess what? I, I used the analogy. I went to the 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 rim place and bought some four thousand dollar rims, but I drive a Fiat. <laughs> so those rims are just sitting in the garage. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Amari Cooper is one of the best at what he does. If you can't get it to him, then what good is he doing on your team? And, 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 and I have been an apologist for Deshaun Watson, and you guys have heard me yes, over have. the last two, two, three years. Yes. But here's what I did. I watch film. And there's guys open. And sometimes there's two or three guys you could pick a guy to throw it to. And he's not throwing it. So I don't know... How else to explain that? And so then I went one step farther. I went and watched him in Houston. And here's what I realized. That he held the ball a lot. He had some tremendous receivers he was throwing it to that got open. Right? You give them enough time, they'll get open. That's the way it works. Football has changed a little bit in that for the first time in a long time, all of quarterbacking is based more on timing. Now, you have the guys who can create plays outside the pocket and who can run the football. We know those guys, the Jaden Daniels, the uh, Lamar Jacksons, uh, Josh Allens. We have guys who can do that. But if you look at a majority of quarterbacking in the league right now, it's drop back, time release, slants, and, and everybody who's doing well in that system, in these systems, Kirk Cousins is going to play quarterback forever because he can throw the football out of the pocket. You have a couple other guys like that. So I don't know. Some quarterbacks take that timing thing and means get rid of the ball quickly. And so they all become short passes where the timing portion of it is you reading a, a, a selected guy on the field and getting rid of it quickly, but the timing portion of it is timing up with the receivers. They haven't been doing that well. And there's only one place you can go with that. If there's guys open and they're not getting the ball, it's the quarterback. And, and I've been the last person to take this stance. And before I took a stance like this, I did all the research and it sucks. I hate having to do this, but I'm always going to be honest about what a situation is or try to be as honest as I can. And the fact of the matter is he is not looking where he should be looking to Sean Watson. He's not getting the ball to where it needs to go. I don't know why. And so that's, that has to be fixed. Having a Mark Cooper or not, it hasn't is is not going to fix that. Mm. Leroy, um, to your point, it's a great point uh, about the timing. It was, it's funny because uh, did you watch that crazy game between Baltimore and Cincinnati a couple weeks ago? Yeah. So I did. you know, both quarterbacks put up like crazy numbers. I think Burrow threw for four hundred yards. <clears throat> Lamar threw for three fifty. Lamar yeah. had four touchdowns. Burrow had five. But Burrow throws a pick late in the game, and it leads to the tie, and then the Bengals screw, screw up the field goal, and the Baltimore ends up winning in overtime. And Burrow's pick, 
I, you know, I said some a friend of mine had asked me like, "What happened? Your Burrow's playing so great. He throws a pick there." I said, "What happened is that Burrow throws, unlike Deshaun Watson, but a lot of the good quarterbacks like Burrow, especially because he has these spots. great receivers. He throws the spots. spots. He's like Jamar Chase is going to be here. I'm going to throw it here because I know Jamar Chase is going to get to that spot. And when I looked at that interception again, Jamar Chase got kind of held up by he like kind of ran into a defensive back and he." He was unable to get to the spot. And that's why sometimes the interceptions look bad because, like, well, who was he throwing right. to? But Chase was supposed exactly. to be there and he got caught it's up. It's like that, Aaron Rodgers' interception at the end of the game. Exactly. Yeah. No. My, that, oh, hold no. on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. That, that was on Aaron Rodgers. No, it wasn't. Oh, First of no, all, it wasn't. Where, Just, where every, wait, wait, wait. The guy had to stop and come back to the ball. So wherever that ball was going, it should have been 20 yards longer. No, I'll tell you what. Just wherever it was going. Here, I, but look at Ocho. What's what's the guy's name that breaks down plays, uh, the former player? Orlovsky? Uh No, 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 no. Um, I think it's Ocho. For, for I, who? I, Ocho. What's Sam his name? I mean, Sam, 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 Sam Ocho. Sam Ocho. Sam, Sam yeah. Ocho. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe, maybe that's him. Go back and look at yeah. his breakdown. And when you piece together the interviews after the game, he's exactly right. They talk about the red line. That was a red line route, which is the midway point between the yeah, numbers, numbers and the yeah. sideline. The receiver right. was supposed to be on that route. The receiver even said so after the game. That was where I was supposed to be. He wasn't there. The, the, the reason I loved the breakdown of the play was because he, he shows where the ball was thrown and where the receiver was from the all 22. And you can see it plain as day. The receiver was in right. the wrong area code. And that's why it was yeah. picked. And where the ball was intercepted, just like Joe Burrows, that's why all, interceptions are not created equal. Sure. They're, they're not. They're, they're, yeah. they're just not. A, yeah. a lot of them. It, and, goes to the, it goes to the quarterback stats, but it's not always on the quarterback. Yeah, and sometimes I think uh, that's unfair. Well, look at the throw Watson made in the first half oh, where the two DBs it was ran an interception. into each other. Yeah, it was an like, interception. He, he, the wide receiver was past those two guys. Well, nowhere near it. He undershot them. And that would have been his fault. It certainly. would have been an interception yeah. had, not, had they not collided. Right. I want to. I, I guess let's put you on the couch for a second, um, uh-huh. and because you can jump into a player's mind, the 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 three word response after the trade. I think it was move or rust or rust or move, whatever it was. Yeah, move or rust. Move yeah. or rust from Amari Cooper. I've I've had a million different people analyze that a million different ways. Some of them said, oh, that is an absolute shot at Deshaun Watson. The way I read it was, if, if, if you're not moving on, you're getting stale. You're rusting. Like a part that yeah. sits still too long, mm-hmm. it can rust. How do Correct. you read that statement? What does that mean? Well, to me, it means nothing. Here's why. Because if you don't have the ability to move on from who you need to, then you're just blowing smoke. It's one of those sayings that you hear, the streets need a body. Right? The streets need something to happen to show that you care or you're trying to make moves or you're trying to do something. But what you need to do, you can't. So when you say move a rust and you pick a wide receiver... That's the third stage of a catch. It goes protection, throw, catch. So why would you go to the last proponent of that and say that's a move or rust? No, it was Amari Cooper that said move or rust, Leroy. Yeah, uh, I'm well, sorry. Again, well, yeah. I I would say it's <laughs> it's kind of a parting gift. Do you think it's a shot at Watson? Right? I think it's a shot of they moving the wrong guy. I think that's what he's saying. Mm. And you're talking about it. Think about this. Think about this. When a different quarterback was in, Amari Cooper had 265 receiving. That's exactly right. So why wouldn't he feel that way? Just based on that. Leroy, you want to you want to be sickened by a stat? Guess who the Browns' leading touch, touchdown maker on the roster right now today is? Take a wild guess. Uh, I know the answer. I know you do. 
Rodney. Oh, it's got to be Miles Garrett. It's oh, Rodney, Rodney McLeod. McLeod. <laughs> yeah. Rodney McLeod has scored two touchdowns, and yeah. currently, right. on Tied. the Browns stat page, he leads the team he in leads. touchdowns. And there you go. Yeah. That's there like you go. equivalent yeah. of Ben Roethlisberger being the all-time wins leader. <laughs> You're right. Stadium. It's the same it's stat. It's so absurd. You it's know? such an indictment. <laughs> That's Rodney or, or the year, the year that. The year that Fitzpatrick led the Dolphins in rushing. Huh. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Quarterback who doesn't run. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's like, that's but, awful. But it speaks, it, speaks to, it speaks to, like, and, and I feel bad for the Browns because when they made the move, there were other teams that wanted Deshaun Watson, and they did whatever they could to get him, right? They were bidding against themselves and I'm thinking, at the end. Well, no, they just didn't want him to leave town. So what's the extra twenty million when you're already giving somebody two hundred? Right? I get that. I understand that. But even when the Browns finally win, they lose. No, you're right. We we did we did victory laps when OBJ was signed. We did victory right. laps when Jarvis Landry came right. to town. We yeah. did victory laps. Right. <laughs> I've never seen victory laps like the Deshaun Watson victory laps mm-hmm. I had to watch. Right. And so you're right. right. Even and, and, when we think and, and we so, win, we lose. Watch. Amari but, Cooper's going to the Super Bowl this year. Am I picking oh, yeah. the Bills He's, for any listen, other reason? No. It's just here, Brown's karma. We'll have to watch that no, this year. And it might be against Baker Mayfield. Amari Cooper's really good. And and now he's I've got a really good quarterback. A number, I've, I've seen a number of players – who are really good that didn't have production on a team that was struggling and we all associated to the player being bad right you see and and it's unfair because that's when you have to really break things down and say well is he really bad or are we really bad and he's you know a proponent of that because if he was doing well the team wouldn't be as bad hmm. so i don't know i like i'm just frustrated I'm frustrated that, you know, I was on on the bandwagon. Say, hey, let's just ride these eleven games out. When he comes back, you'll warm up those first six games, and then he start getting hurt, and then Deshaun, you know, other things, and and I don't know. And and for goodness sakes, they are trying everything. Right, you have tried every level of offense to help this man be successful. But when you see guys open, that's good offense. Mm. When you see guys running routes and being where they're supposed to be and waving hands, hey, I'm open, that's good offense. Leroy, Nick Chubb's going to come back. Uh, Jay Crawford thinks that he could be Batman and save the season. Uh, I don't think so. I think well, he's be- idiot fan Jay Crawford. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so Jay's alter ego idiot fan thinks that Nick Chubb can be Batman and save the day. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going to be good. I think he's going to put up numbers. He's going to help the team stabilize somewhat. But I still don't think they're a playoff team even with Nick Chubb. What What do you say? What do you say? Win partner? one game. Win Win one game and, 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 to the and next. go from there. Like stop worrying about playoff contention and all this right now you need to focus on right now one game at a time because you're so deep in the hole that you know you just need a little victories little victories so i, I get nick that chubb, but can the return of nick, nick chubb, chubb lead to that it can in certain ways okay think about this they've been struggling to do something they've been doing for the last five years and that's run the football Maybe it's the style of running back. Maybe it's the plays that they're trying to run. Um, I don't know what that is. But I know Nick Chubb can run the football. I don't know what level uh, Nick Chubb we're going to get. But I know he can run the football. Maybe that takes some pressure and that that creates more space in the secondary for other guys, for the the, the uh, wide receivers, right. for Deshaun Watson to find there's him. a threat and there. So, right. So what I'm hoping for – is that a chain reaction of things to start happening. If you run the ball successfully, then your play action works more successfully. Yep. Then your receivers have more success. And it kind of works from that point. Because keep in mind, 
as long as the Browns have had a legitimate threat to run the football, that's what everybody has concentrated on. Right. And when they don't, now you make it harder for for everybody else that's running you're around in the secondary. Yeah, you're one dimensional. Right. Uh, Leroy, last question, 15 seconds, please. Was it Connor Stallions that gave Ryan Day the chicken bone that he's been choking on in every big game? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, look. It's a shot it at was both a, teams, you know. It, it, it was like, it was very creative what Oregon did at oh, the end no, of that game. Oh, no, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was, it was, it might be the one of the greatest coaching moves that I have ever I seen. I agree. I, I 100% agree. That being, that being said. They're going to lose to Ohio State. In the everybody on the other side of the ball should have been aware. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, It was next yeah, level yeah, genius. Yeah. They should have put it 15 guys on the genius. field. Then. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You traded five yards for four seconds, right. and it and that they needed every one of those four that's seconds. Right. And you could mm-hmm. decline the penalty right. if you make a play, but the more guys you throw on the field, the less well, likely you are to make a play. Well, and that's what Lanning said. Lanning said, yeah. "Look, our odds of stopping them from getting a big play right. increase with every man we have on the field." That's right. And the penalty funny is still the, the same. Would have been five funny yards. if the whole defense would have run like every Lan- player on the Lanning roster. Lanning has literally forced the NCAA rules committee to go back in oh, yeah, and investigate everything. That's and right. I think they add an addendum to that. For every additional man that you have over 11, it's five yards. Mm. Well, I mean, So if well, you have 13, <laughs> because listen, it's not any more punitive to have 15. That's true. Exactly. That's true. And if, it's gonna, and if they're not going to reset the clock, put 15 out there. That's right. Why not? <laughs> I, have some I sort always. Of rule against yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. I always get confused when they decide to take time off the clock, right? Yeah. So you either use your timeout or a ten second runoff. You either right. I, I get confused by that. Yeah, it's it's. There's a lot to be confused by. Uh, Leroy, great to talk to you. Um, read the Players Tribune love letter from Nick Chubb to Cleveland, and it's it's a five minute read. It'll be the best thing you read all month. And then text me your thoughts on it later in the day. I'm really curious okay. to see what you have to say about that. Hmm. I'll right. text it to you, Leroy. See, see you, Leroy. Thanks, brother. See you next okay. week. Thanks, awesome. guys. That was see you next the week. great.